between the Houston Gamblers and the Oklahoma Outlaws. Houston gets on top early. Quarterback Jim Kelly has had a brilliant rookie season so far. Richard Johnson, 39 yards touchdown. Kelly threw for 325 yards in this game. Third quarter, it's Kelly and Johnson again, this time 25 yards. Gamblers led it 28 to 13. But Doug Williams and Alfonso Williams with six seconds to go. As the ball is released, the time on the clock expires, and Alfonso Williams goes up in a crowd and gets the Hail Mary. Two-point conversion, good. We go into overtime. In overtime, the flea flicker. Back to Doug Williams. Again, he looks for Alfonso Williams. 53-yard gain down to the two-yard line. That meant that a friend Herrera had a chip shot of 19 yards to win the game. The snap is down. The kick is up and good. And the Oklahoma Outlaws come from nowhere to beat Houston 31-28. Meanwhile, more stars were in action under the Silver Dome in Pontiac, Michigan, as the Panthers beat San Antonio, but the big story in this game was tragedy that struck the Michigan Panthers. Number one, Anthony Carter, wide receiver, goes up for this Bobby Bear pass, watch his left arm, he comes down, a fractured left arm for Anthony Carter, he'll be out at least six weeks, maybe as much as eight weeks. But Terry Miller and the rest of the Panthers picked up the slack. Here goes Terry Miller, former Oklahoma State All-American, 16-yard touchdown run as the Panthers lengthen their lead. One bad play for Bobby Averis picked off by Johnny Fairfield, linebacker of San Antonio. That was the only highlight for the Gunslingers, though. Michigan goes on to win it 26 to 10. And then, in Pittsburgh's Three Rivers Stadium, the Maulers on Sunday took on the winless Oakland Invaders. It was a big day for Pittsburgh's passing combination of Glenn Carrado at quarterback and Jackie Flowers, the wide receiver. Flowers, just acquired in a trade a couple of weeks ago, had three touchdown catches from Corrado. The second-year man from Florida State had a big day, catching 140 yards worth of passes in the air for three touchdowns on the day. The Maulers win their second game of the year. Final, Pittsburgh 28 and Oakland 14. Meanwhile, the winless Chicago Blitz took on the winless Washington Federals. That game was played Saturday afternoon at RFK Stadium in the nation's capital. Somebody had to win their first game of the year. You thought it would be the Federals as Bledsoe, Curtis Bledsoe, takes off on an 80-yard run in the waning moments of the fourth quarter. The extra point was no good, though, and Washington led by only six at 20-14. to 14. That extra point comes back to haunt the Federals because Vince Evans, with a minute six to go, scores. And the extra point by Chicago is good. The Blitz go on to win their first game. The Express made his debut, and Young played well, although the Express once again came up a loser at home because Brian Seif of the Generals also played well. Here he throws a touchdown pass to Clarence Collins. The Generals led 13-3 to before Steve Young, out of the shotgun, throws his first touchdown pass of what will be a great career to JoJo Townsell, 13-10 to Jersey at halftime. Third quarter, though, Brian Seif finds Herschel Walker on the biggest play of the day, a 50-yard pass run play, and watch Herschel turn on the speed, bowl over his would-be tacklers. The Generals hang on for a 26-10 win in Los Angeles. Then the Tampa Bay Bandits, the only team ever to beat the Philadelphia Stars in Veterans Stadium, return to the scene of the crime, and the Stars got even. USFL's leading rusher, Calvin Bryant, had another big afternoon on Sunday. Bryant ran on the day for 114 yards, 18 of them in this gallop up the middle. Calvin Bryant had didn't practice all week because of a bad hamstring. Now, the goofiest play maybe the week. Cusina to Willie Collier, got it, fumbles the ball. Here comes Calvin Bryant, thank you very much. Bryant goes the rest of the way, 38 yards for the touchdown. That's the kind of day it was for Philadelphia. They were all over Tampa Bay, 38 to 24. And then, it was the Jacksonville Bulls last Saturday night in Memphis against the Showboats, a game seen on ESPN. The Bulls jumped out to a 14-0 lead. Willie McClendon scores from four yards out. McClendon would later be injured, though, and that would put a severe crimp in the Jacksonville offense. Walter Lewis can throw. He also can run. He takes it in from three yards out to tie the game at 24. Pepper Rogers says, I think we're going to win it on the last play of the game. Pepper, you're right. Allen Duncan, field goal winner. And the Memphis Showboats improved their record to two and four with a victory over the Jacksonville Bulls, 27 to 24. Also Sunday afternoon at Mile High Stadium in Denver, the surprising Denver Gold up their record to five and one with a 17-7 victory over George Allen's Arizona Wranglers, who are now three and three. The star for the goal, Harry Sidney, run for 111 yards, including a fourth quarter touchdown that clinched it. Denver wins it 17 to seven, they're five and one.